a lot of time together, Alex. Did we have to take advantage of it? Every second matters between the Are three of us. Are you saying you left the fucking comics there? Hold yeah. on. Save it for the actual show proper. We oh haven't even started. God. So we're going to start we, officially oh, in oh, three. Oh, Alex, we also don't know how the show works. Thank you. <laughs> Great. I'll inform you as we go. We'll kind of take it moment by moment. We're going to start officially in three, two, what is up everybody welcome to comic book club i'm alex i'm justin i'm pete and we got a few things i think we need to work out here right that's what it sounds like based on the beginning of this show Mm -hmm. uh justin uh, you went to clear stuff out of the pit Right, the, the, the People's space. Improv yeah. Theater. Yes, um, I went to the pit and the pendulum, and I faced them both Whoa. down. Uh, the People's Improv Theater, where we do this show, we did this show. Uh, um, the dark times. They um are just having stuff. People take their stuff out, so I got to go into our ancient home and see what the world has. Um, what was it like I, in there? It was uh the same. What. Did you miss the stage? It was the same. It was the same. Uh, but so we had a bunch of things backstage. We had some uh, uh, suitcase and microphones. Blanked on the word there. Uh, we also had a. What's box. great about the microphones is it has a lot of our old spit in them. <laughs> so it's like oh, pre-COVID, pre-COVID, spit. pre-COVID. Oh wow! So you were able to get a little taste without uh, worrying about getting infected. You could use the DNA to clone us. Yeah, exactly. I've got yeah, a little. I'll pee. tell you. I've Ever. been. I, I keep little jars of all of my friends' spits, and I've just uh, just been waiting. I've been like spits. eking those out over the past year to just remind myself of what all my friends are like. Wow! Well, you get them out and just smell them a little bit. All the uh, spits. You bring them to life little. and then murder them. How do you do that? That's a Pete answer to that question for sure. <laughs> uh, so uh, some of the rescued a box of uh, the boys merchandise the fuck soups hats oh, so wow. we still have some fuck soups hats if anybody <laughs> wants them we're giving them away we need a contest that will we can give them away and these are vintage because they're for they're pre season 1 of the boys yes this is back before it was a prestige drama <laughs> <laughs> when they had hats that said fuck soups on and you got my stack of comics right you got the comics from us that's what I left behind. What? Because you, you can't take it there. You can't take anything. You got to leave a little something. Why would the, you um, grab hats and not the comics? I made a judgment call in the moment. Oh, hats no. are functional. You can wear them on your head. Comic books, tra- <laughs> basically trash. <laughs> basically garbage. Oh, my God. You Why could wear you a comic book on your head. If, if it gets you're... rainy, it makes a good de facto umbrella. I don't care if you get the equipment. You were supposed to get the goddamn comic books. Ah, we had different goals. I didn't bump into you there when I went and took a fucking time out of my day. <laughs> and you sat at your cozy little <laughs> Philly home eating a bunch of sliced meats and cheese Whiz. How'd you know that? You got cameras here? Uh, well, yeah, anyway, really... those comics, I guess, are up for grabs if you could break into oh, the pit. Man. So definitely check those out. Damn uh, yeah, sorry, Pete. I guess you're gonna have to come back from Philly and rescue them. Uh, good news. <laughs> be a, be a not hero. Throwing Pete. out anything from the pit, though, right? Uh, I don't think that so. Stuff I think is this all is just safe. a precautionary step. The pit is. Um, the, uh, I talked to the owner that he still plans on holding out of the space and reopening. It's just, as you may imagine, uh, tough times. Man, yes. I think tough. so. But you know what is not tough actually is our guests on the show today. That was a terrible intro. <laughs> yeah, but, it was. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to invite them over on screen anyway. Uh, they are Jason Liu and Chip Sadarsky. They're the creators of a new book called Afterlift that is out from Dark Horse and Comixology. Hello, Jason. Welcome to the stream. Hello, Chip. Welcome to All the stream. All right. How are you guys doing? What's up, Chance? What up? What up? What up? Thanks for having us. What up? Oh my gosh! Thanks for coming on. So this book, uh, four wait, was it four or five issues? Five, five issues. Five issues. Yeah. Okay, five issues out from Dark Horse, out from Comicsology. There's a collection as well. Uh, tell me if I get the pitch right. The way that I read it is, it's fast and furious, what? but goes to hell. Is that fair? No, there, it's uber furious goes to hell. Uber go. furious. Um, I, I feel there's more depth to the material than that, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Agree to disagree, Jim. Agree to disagree. It, it is also about family. Yeah. Wow, yeah. nice. nice huh? Very good. So, Sorry, I, I should have specified. I hate to tell you, they say that a lot in Fast and Furious. As well. No, I know. <laughs> I know. Any of those I know. 
Uh, <laughs> it, I should have specified it's Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift goes to hell. How about that? Mm. Is that there's yeah, more there nuance yeah. to that particular. Yeah, you nailed it. Thank you. Uh, well, how did you guys pitch the book? What was the initial germ of the idea? Um, well, I've been talking to Comixology for a while about doing something there. And uh, uh, w- weirdly, this all started because of Daredevil, uh, oh. which is a book I write for Marvel. And, yeah, killing uh, it. Thank you. At the beginning of that process, um, I was talking a lot to the Arco, the artist uh, Marco Cacchetto about color and how I really wanted the, the, the night scenes to not be blue. I wanted them to be really warm. And so mm. I ended up watching Michael Mann's Collateral. Mm. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the movie. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sure. Tom yeah. Cruise is basically a, a passenger in uh, Jimmy Fox's uh, taxi cab as he goes around and commits atrocities all night. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I watched that to get like color reference to send him. And while I'm watching, I'm just like, oh man, this is like, Tom Cruise is always the best when he's playing. Can I swear on the show? Oh yes. yeah. Exclusively. An asshole. An asshole. Yeah. A monstrous asshole. Himself. Um, <laughs> look, I'm not saying that. That's you. You're saying, you're saying he's acting like an asshole from his he's, source material that is his life. He is an excellent actor, and he can tap into, say, you or you or you and <laughs> imbue himself with those qualities. But anyways, um, uh, watching that, I'm just like, oh, man, like he's, it's kind of like the idea of driving the devil around for an evening. And that kind of started me thinking about, well, what if it was an actual demon? And then uh, I started thinking about crossing in the river Styx and going into the afterlife and the kind of the myths around that. Uh, and, and what the modern version of that would be. So all these ideas kind of came together, and uh, and I realized, well, fuck, I don't want to drop cars. <laughs> <laughs> what goddamn sucker, what old intern of mine yeah. could I trick Whoa, into wow. drawing cars for five issues? That me. <laughs> and then I reached yeah. out to Jason Liu, artist extraordinaire. Uh, the art is amazing. It's car. so beautiful. Car Thank artist you. extraordinaire. Yeah, I was super hungry uh, to 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 work with with Chip after uh, finishing. Um, I wrapped up a, a series that I was doing on my own called The Pitiful Game of Lizard, which was Toronto's own superhero for for wow. five years. And then, like, I was kind of torn, going like, "Man, like, I I don't know what to do now. Like, I'm I'm kind of done with comics. It, it feels." And, <laughs> and then <laughs> and, and then uh, Chip, I, I got an email from Chip. Going like, hey, do you want to be an artist for my new comic? And I'm like, yeah, for sure. But the only catch was I had to draw lots of cars. And I was like, yeah, then, yeah, no problem. Um, I'm, just give me like a month and a half, and I'm going to just practice drawing cars until I get it right. <laughs> I'm going to go go ride in a car, look at a car, <laughs> sort of experience Everything, cars. everything. Yeah. Uh, like no. watching some Fast and Furious clips on YouTube. Yeah, and smart. And initial D, you know, getting all the speed lines right. Um, <laughs> yeah, all, all that was all done free-handedly. <laughs> and yeah, I was, I was not really known as like a technical drawer. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy how they turned out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, cars are hard. Like, we're, I know we're sort of joking around about it, but it's hard to make them yeah. look not sh- shitty and still and boxy and, and then also in motion. Like, it is it, harder than people. I mean, maybe and, and it was... Like, it was just, like, like trying to like have me draw cars in a way where like they're bouncing off like pitfall yeah like, yeah machines. It's, it's like it's even harder like it was, the physics. Yeah. it was pretty amazing actually watching jason get better at them because he would send me sketches as he was practicing and the first sketches i'm like oh yeah that's great that's you know it's definitely better than i could do and then like within a month they were just like so much better and i was so angry at him as an artist <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Because I'm, I'm I'm at the age now where I can't learn anything. Yeah, like learning we're stuff. We're all there. Just, yeah, forget it. Like I could draw the same thing over and over again. It's not going to get better. <laughs> and so to see Jason just being able to level up constantly um, makes me upset as an artist, but very very happy as a writer. Honestly, Jason, I think you're going to get a call from Kia. Uh, I don't want to like. <laughs> not, I'm not saying like Ford, but Kia is definitely yeah. going to call you. Those Kia bucks. <laughs> Those Kia bucks, which are yeah. not usable in any currency no. uh, fashion. No, well, not even on yeah. Kia cars. Weirdly enough, <laughs> no, it's a uh, lost <laughs> currency, like um, ruples. <laughs> yeah, funny thing. Uh, they they you reached out to me before Afterlift uh, to do like a, an ad 
um, spot for them, but it didn't work out because I, I didn't work. I didn't try that hard on cars at the time until uh, working uh, with Chip. <laughs> damn. So Life. instead, you just made comic money. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so advice, sorry. I think. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the approach to the afterlife? This is a mild spoiler for the book, but it's kind of this mashup of sort of whatever you believe, but you still need to execute that visually. Uh, maybe this is a question for Jason, but also potentially for Chip, just in terms of building out the mythology of this particular book. I'll let Jason tackle the visual. Me? Yeah. Um, I mean, well, when it comes to the afterlife, um, like there was, there was one line in issue number one where uh, Dumu, the, the mysterious passenger, uh, says like the afterlife is like this this melting pot in a way of like all these like ideas, something along those sent sentiments. Uh, it's not the exact quote, but uh, I took advantage of that. I was like, wow, like you know what? I'm gonna just try to uh, mix it up and like bring in things even from like my own culture, uh, like from Indonesia. Um, so I had lots of fun like designing the demons and the series because I didn't want to make them look like a derivative of like things we've already seen in Hellboy or, or all the other comics, like just, just, you know, big horns and, and all red. Like, I just want to play around with that. So I grew up um, fascinated at like these Indonesian demon faces um, at my uncle's place, like that, that were seen in paintings and sculptures. Oh, okay. No, I got awesome. worried when, when you finally said your uncle's place, I thought you weren't, were just seeing them around, and I got a little worried about you. But okay, thank you. <laughs> no, but, but they're, they're like they're just looming at me as as a kid, like just staring at me. It, it seems because they have like like this bulbous eyes and crooked teeth, and they're just wild, uh, like very like very colorful too. So just it was a lot of factors for me to play around with and and, and the concepts to to, to make the, these demons like like our own character trait for, for the book. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. Well, Chip, what about you from the writing perspective, when you were building out the whole mythology here, what kind of yeah. went into it from your personal perspective? What did you leave on the table? It was kind of the, the trickiest part that I kind of had to figure out right from the beginning. Cause uh, I was like, Oh, what is the afterlife? Like, um, do I just pick <laughs> one version? Do I smash them all together? Like, uh, how do you how do you present that in such a way that it still resonates with readers? So, you know, I went I went a little like, you know, kind of like Neil Gaiman-y with it, if that can be used as a uh, <laughs> as a yes. term. Yes, and I'm like, you know, it's your beliefs that kind of create you know the magic of the afterlife. So, um, whatever your belief system is, that's that's what kind of is presented to you when you when you go beyond this world um that seemed like the, the best way to do it um so it, it you can tie it directly to the characters and and their systems of belief and what they kind of need to encounter as they go along it, so yeah. what i what, what's ahead, very Pete. interesting is that like you're talking about that but also the issue of daredevil uh dealing with belief uh mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the king in black i thought that was really cool the way you used daredevil in such a perfect way with that yeah i mean it, it's weird i'm writing uh uh daredevil alongside this because obviously he's all about his you know catholic faith and um i'm i don't necessarily subscribe to any faith uh you know my mom was catholic my dad was agnostic and i kind of got a bit of both growing up um uh, but yeah, yeah. Weirdly enough, I mean, I'm fascinated by it, which helps. Um, <laughs> whenever I go to pitch an idea, it weirdly kind of usually revolves around faith and death and life. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be pigeonholed. People are gonna yeah. give me the sign of Bibles at comic <laughs> well, conventions. Yeah, yeah, yikes, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I love, what I love about what you do in, in Afterlift, though, is the idea that someone has their sort of the beliefs they grew up with, and then like sort of random ones they like a little believe in and that that becomes sort of amalgamated there that's something mm -hmm. that i hadn't really seen because I, I feel that's such a true thing where it's like i don't really believe in a organized religion but occasionally i'll just jump in the air and see if i can fly and i believe in that um so that's my like cobbled thing and so everyone has their own yeah yeah 
I, I don't know how often that works for you, but <laughs> not yet. But that's faith, baby. That's faith, baby. You gotta believe the religion you where you fly. <laughs> I, yeah, I, it's a I'm loose up. religion. It's, it's more spiritual. It's more spiritual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a comment over here on YouTube for you guys. Green mm. Shadow says, Afterlift was one of the best books last year. I hope to see more and more of Jason's work in the future. And I hope Aww. Chip will stay on Daredevil until they make a vaccine for COVID-32. Uh, that turned very dark <laughs> at the end there. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah. a very nice thing to do. Oh, that's very sweet. Yes. Yeah. Well, in terms of this book, since it was dual published in Comixology and Dark Horse, I feel like this has become old hat at this point. But was there anything differently you needed to do when you were thinking about it? Okay, this is going digitally versus this is going print, whatever print means at the current uh, moment. For for on the writing side, um, there's not a lot of difference. The only kind of positive uh, that digital had was the speed, like knowing it's coming out sooner. Uh, and also, if you needed to add like a black page with some text, uh, you don't need extra budget for it. You know, um, <laughs> we could we could you can you can play with that a lot more because there's no printing costs. But really, Jason had to kind of handle the the big differences. Yeah, they they gave me like a, a good reference guide of like what not to do when when drawing for comicsology. Um, yeah. Like oh, interesting, no double page spreads or like wide page oh. like full page spreads. Uh, no creative panels where like things were overlapping. So I, oh, I, was, wow. I was not able to be uh, creative that way, but I was able to like tell the story visually, like as if it was shot like a movie, like, mm -hmm. so like a letterbox or like a, so it looks cinematic in a way, like just a yeah. widescreen panel. Lots of them. Yeah. <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> lots of them. <laughs> Chip, can you talk? We haven't actually talked about the characters much yet because there's three main characters we mentioned: the main demon, uh, Domu, if I'm getting the name correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but then we have our driver and we have our passenger as well. What, what can you talk about with them for those who haven't read the book yet? Um, yeah, weirdly, I think all three of them kind of have things in common. Um, they're all lost. Uh, like Janice is kind of as the driver; she's left her you know her career in finance and she's trying to figure out what she wants to do next and she's carrying some guilt around susanna who uh spoilers is the recently departed passenger um is clearly carrying a lot of guilt around and and, and needing to let go of that um and even dumu to a certain extent is trying to figure out what he wants um because as you kind of go through the story you recognize that he has conflicts with his boss and he's trying to like <laughs> He's trying to ascend to something uh, uh, as well. Um, you know, the, the, the main theme of the story is about, it's about guilt and your sense of responsibility and uh, self-forgiveness, um, which, you know, uh, the interesting thing about hell as a concept is most people who think they're going to hell are the ones that probably shouldn't. And the ones who don't mm -hmm. think they're going to hell are the ones that probably should <laughs> you know you because you, you're always you're beating yourself up and mm -hmm. uh it's about being able to kind of uh move past that and grow as a person instead of letting that drag you to the, the fiery pits of hell so um so the, the two main characters have that in common um and even later on in the story when they uh when they meet uh twizel the semi-fallen angel um that's a theme in his story as well kind of not being able to let go in my uh, religion, a, uh, the okay. hell is just when you can't, you keep not being able to fly. So. Yeah, yeah. Hell, hell is like the weighted shoes <laughs> check that we all wear. You can't. Yeah, we all wear what? in our souls. Yeah, <laughs> in our souls. Um, I definitely. I, oh, go ahead. You were gonna ask. What, what I love question. about this uh, story-wise, you you walk us into the story characters, and then we get the sort of uh, I heard the lost sound when it's like whoa when it's uh, she realizes <laughs> that it's the. Uh, that she is the the ferrying this soul to hell uh, or uh, to the afterlife, and I love that you you sort of slow walks into that, hit us hard, and then it is just like such an even progression through all these great um, mythological ideas. Um, can you talk about how you just sort of put together the story? I, I know you talked about combining different religions and stuff, but just from a plot mm -hmm. perspective. Uh, well, first of all, we because the book was digital, I did try to get the sound effect from Lost. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just too much, too much money. Yeah, it's unlocked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. JJ it's unlocked. Abrams wrote that. 
He actually, J.J. <laughs> Abrams wrote that note. He wrote it with that. his mouth. He was right. like, yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> the, um, when I, when I started and I started kind of researching other religions, I kind of created this massive list of um, different concepts that I wanted to touch upon in the afterlife. And I only really got to touch upon a couple. Um, uh, uh, because it was it was everything was kind of driven by story like you've got five issues um these are the themes these are the places you know you need to get to you know you have to hit hell you know you have to hit um uh heaven or paradise by the by the end um so what what parts in between do you want and because of the catholicism in the story uh and and the buddhism you know I, i knew i wanted to touch upon those uh, purgatory felt like it made the most sense uh, limbo not as much um, uh, so it, it was it was kind of you, you map a thing like that out and you kind of you kind of figure out what what serves the story purpose you know the river the river sticks is like it's too good of a visual to not do yeah, um, yeah. and uh, uh, and I knew Jason would do a great job at it I mean I remember specifically uh, writing that, and uh, I think I probably freaked Jason out a little bit. It was a description <laughs> of like, oh, and then you know, with all these boulders that kind of turn into the heavens, and uh, Jason uh, really killed it on that one. Yeah, it was that was very intimidating. With the amount of real estate I had on a page, it was like maybe like a fifth of a page, <laughs> and it was like we're we're looking up from like the cliff, and it like just dissipates into like floating rocks and it's like i don't have that much height room to do that oh well, yeah. I'll give it a shot. yeah that's because of the bad script writing I'm like here you go you got a fifth of the page to do this <laughs> you'd think i'd be better at that since i also draw but nope i'm a monster yeah. through and through oh. Uh, Chip, we have a question for you here in the comments from Joe. Uh, do you know if Ryan North ever came to terms with Elmer Fudd not being a family man? Um, uh, Ryan North uh, never comes to terms with anything. <laughs> he doesn't have to because he's he's tall, he's handsome, he's smart, and he's funny. So what does uh, he have to come to terms with? He could just like mm-hmm. float along in life and just keep saying like, no, I was right. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, another question from YouTube. This is from Scott Carpenter. It says, thoughts on a sequel or nine sequels if it's like Fast and Furious? Uh, I think we've established <laughs> I was wrong about that. It was more like Collateral, which had as no sequels. But <laughs> yes. 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 Exactly. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Well, it's, it, it's funny because um, this felt like an opportunity to write a story that had like a beginning, middle, and end. You know, I've said in a few interviews that... Um, writing for Marvel and DC is like writing a continuous second act. Like you don't really originate. You don't really end. You kind of, you're, you're shepherding these characters along from one crisis to another. Uh, and then you leave the book. Right. Uh, so with this, it was really satisfying to be able to kind of tell the complete story, but subconsciously I must've been like, Oh, but you need to leave it open because the ending that I thought was final, uh, everyone keeps saying, Oh, it looks like you have a sequel in mind, which I, which I do not. Um, <laughs> you know, Jason, Jason, and I were working on a follow-up, um, but it's uh, it's uh, wildly different from this one. Yeah, it's gonna I, be a lot I mean, of fun though. <laughs> when I yeah. finished it, my first thought was, "Wow, he must have had the most amazing Uber driver that like really mm, inspired this inspired. whole thing." <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I will say this. Remember Uber drivers? Remember going places? Oh, 2019? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's fun. Yeah. And we were like, oh, let's not talk. I would kill to talk to someone. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's so funny because like, I didn't even think about it, but this book really, it just taps into like this long forgotten desire to travel in cars with people, but also just the long desire for the sweet release of death. Yeah, from this nightmare. <laughs> yeah. So together. it's like both those things in a book, if you want to. Uh... Yeah, it's 2021 in five issues. That's how efficient it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, question here from Ben, the Border College Chip. Your Howard the Duck felt like a complete story. Same with Life Story. Do you purposely seek that out in your Marvel work? I mean, Life Story was set up to be that way. Um, because I knew it was a certain number of issues and uh, we were telling a, 
a, a different kind of story in a different universe. Um, though at the same time, it still feels a little fractured because you, we were kind of touching upon different, you know, eras of Spider-Man throughout that. Um, Howard the Duck felt like a complete story, but uh, I didn't have it all mapped out from the beginning. Uh, we were just lucky enough that um, we could wrap it up and walk off the stage without, you know, mm-hmm. being forcibly canceled, which is kind of a rarity. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, it's one of those things where we were kind of fishing up the story and then the artist Joe and I were just like, oh, should we keep doing more? And we were both like, no, I think that's it. I think we did it. We, you know, we let our editor know and he's like, oh, okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ed- editors are so used to firing people. Because that's yeah. usually how people leave books. That um, mm. I think our editor was just happy that he didn't have to fire us. <laughs> yeah, but you fired you fired them. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. I fired Marvel <laughs> Comics. <laughs> Marvel, I did not mean that. <laughs> I just sent it to Mr. Marvel himself. So big Marvel oh. owns the company. Mr. We all know that. Big Marvel. Yes. Mr. Big Marvel. Uh, Jason, you're you have a story coming up, right? In Razor Blades, the the mm. horror collection. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, I'm doing a, a short s- serial with uh, Alex Picnato, who is the writer of Giga. Um, and yeah, so so we did our first story in Razor Blades, the horror magazine issue number two, and uh, this anthology is put together by James Tinian Four and. Steve Fox, and there's like a, a lot of great horror uh, artists and writers that are involved with this. So I'm, I was very honored to be part of this, and I s- signed on to be part of this, uh, doing like a, a like a a series of like four short stories uh, for the coming issues. So issue number three, they're doing they're not doing pre orders, but you, you can order it on, at a read razorblades.com, and you're, they're doing a limited run. So go over there and. Order yourself a copy. That's it's so cool. I, I love that James is doing this anthology. Like he just like I love yeah. horror. Why not just do this? <laughs> yeah. In his spare time between doing thirty six comic books, he's just releasing an awesome horror collection. It's oh, I'm sure cool. he's filled with regrets over the whole thing. But <laughs> yeah, <I> mean, <laughs> why? <laughs> but, the, but the readers get this cool project. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. very cool. I can't wait to check that out. Uh, Straight bullet in the comments says, when Electra is done taking on the role of Daredevil, is she just going to kill someone just to finally get it out of her system? I love the frustration she feels in holding back. I think we can all relate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, I don't know why they assume that she's going to be done taking on the role of Daredevil. Great call. Ooh. Great point. Um, I have a I, <laughs> I have a Daredevil question as well. Um, we um, there's a, the our opinions on Foggy Nelson on this oh podcast my God. run How dare you. run the run all the right. gamut. All right, let's do this. Uh, so um, I wanted to hear your take. Like, what is the value of Foggy Nelson? Just from a legal, as a oh, lawyer. And see if you can um, figure out friend. what Justin's position is on Foggy <laughs> Nelson based on the tone and words used in the question. Yes, yes. I, I've seen uh, a totally objective um, Foggy Nelson. To have his, to... Name is, let's, his name's Foggy. Let's just keep that in mind. For no, me no, his name is Franklin. His name is Franklin. Okay. Um, I don't hear that used a lot, but... To, to have a character um, who's been with Matt Murdock from the beginning, like from Daredevil issue, you know, one all the way through to now, um, That's right. to, to kind of be that rock character that is um, entirely unfuckable. <laughs> <laughs> Defining I, I, trait. I, I, I think it's great. I think, you know, the fact that they're friends, but they're also <laughs> kind of so opposite each other um, is, is what makes it work. And uh, and you know, God bless Foggy Nelson is what That's I. That's right. To say. That being said, <laughs> fuck. Nelson. I don't I don't use him that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I genuinely feel uh, uh, bad about that because I know there are a lot of Foggy fans out there. Um, when when it's appropriate, when it helps the story, um, he's he's great to have kind of pop in. Now and then to kind of also he's he's good to remind Matt that he's being stupid, yeah. Um, yeah in in exactly. a down to earth in a down to earth way because you know Matt Murdock can be like oh God you know God you torment Rude. me and I must suffer this way and Bobby's like just shut up yeah. what's yeah. wrong with you can't you see what you're doing yeah so anyways uh, that's where I come down on the foggy debate I'm pro foggy 
Uh, slightly slightly idea. bigger question just to stay on the Daredevil thing while we're talking about it. Something that we talk a lot about with different Daredevil runs, and I don't know if you have a thought about this since you're very much in one right now, but it always feels like there's something about the character Daredevil that just drives writers to be their absolute best. Just like put them, it feels almost like I got to put absolutely everything in this run. Uh, do you feel that way when you're writing it? Is that something <laughs> you feel that pressure of, or is it just always trying to do the best story you possibly can? No, I'm, I'm shitting it out. Like I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, you know, there, there, there's definitely obviously a, uh, 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 the writers who came before are of such quality that, um, on some level you want to raise your game, but also the character is kind of meant for it because, uh, he's not popular enough that the powers that be need to keep an eye on you and shape things and have him be in this crossover, that crossover, or on a, a, an X-Men or an Avengers or in space. Like, you know, it's, it's daredevil. Um, it's a title that stands on its own in which there's a long history of just kind of fucking with the character and telling stories yeah. that you might not be able to tell anywhere else. Like, uh, uh, you know, as an example, like I, I had him not in costume for like, I want to say yeah. like 16 issues. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you couldn't do that. You can't do that with Spider-Man. You just can't like, he's the yeah. flagship character of Marvel. Um, there's got to be a recognizable Spider-Man in Spider-Man. Um, so well, so there's, a that's, more, there's a lot more freedom. And that's been my take. I feel like your run is so good because I feel like you really Queens gambited us with it. You like put all your, you meticulously put all your pieces on the table and then you were like, but you just hit us hard. Uh, and that's, that takes a lot of confidence to do. And I feel like that's really rare to see. I mean, that's yeah, so I, I think it, it is all, it's also to Marvel's credit and the editors there and, you know, CB is the one who thought it was a good idea to put me on Daredevil. Um, and, you know, when I pitch them stuff, if there's any pushback, I basically say, just let me do it. If I'm wrong, I'll, you know, <laughs> I'll leave the book. Don't worry. And, uh, <laughs> and they're like, hmm, a chance to get rid of Chip Zdarsky? <laughs> and, and, and then it works out and, you know, I get to uh, I get to keep writing it. So. Um, yeah, they've been they've been super supportive. That's great. Yeah. Uh, this is a question for both of you uh, from Bilal Elialian. Uh, he says, "If Marvel brings back another Alpha Flight series, would you guys want to have a run at it?" Jason? Yeah, that would be my first Marvel work if it was. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Great. There it is. You know, it's funny. In the past, <clears throat> I've turned down Alpha Flight work. I, I did one Alpha Flight story with uh, another um, raid uh, member, um, from Ramon Perez. Perez. Um, we, we did a short story mm. uh, uh, featuring Alpha Flight and uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Tony Stark like, wow. in, a, in a boxing match. Um, All here. Yeah. So uh, that, that kind of like, you know, that ticked the box, I guess. Like, okay, I did Alpha Flight. And and since then, Marvel's done a few <laughs> Alpha Flight things, and they've invited me to join in because I'm Canadian, and uh, I always say no. Uh, so I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't need to do that. But like lately, I've been thinking like, oh man, you could probably have some fun. Like maybe it's the Daredevil thing, where you know no one's really going to be looking at it. So you can kind of do whatever you want. So in the yeah. back of my mind, I keep toying with an Alpha Flight thing because it's like you could just do whatever you want, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, because all of, all of Canada is clamoring for more Alpha Flight books, right? Like everyone's like, "That's what we love. That's what we want." I mean, <laughs> I think the world, I, I would say that the world is clamoring for it mm. because it's there's such an international flavor to Canada and Canadian stories <laughs> that people are just That's like, "Oh, I need to find out what's happening in Canada." Puck is such like, a Canadian darling. Yeah, he, he should be on the flag, to be perfectly honest. Jason, <laughs> since you haven't done uh, Marvel work other than Alpha Flight, which we know is definitely your first choice, do you have a second choice <laughs> of team or character or something like that that you would like to hop on a book for? Um, I, I thought it would be fun to to do like a, a one or like a like a one shot or a mini series of like multiple man, where I take the story and it's like a choose your own adventure. It's one solid story, but you're following multiples. Uh. And I did a trial run. I did like a two-page spread to show everyone. And this was like four years ago. And I was like, 
this could be possible. Like it would be fun to read if, if you're just following, you're, you're, like you're reading it many times because you're following each uh, multiple. So mm -hmm. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I love that. I idea. love that. Idea. Approved. Great, great idea. Yeah. Too good. It's too good. That's the problem. <laughs> too good. Uh, <laughs> over here on YouTube, Agitato says, "Ask Chip about Stillwater. Tell him Sarah says hi." Uh, so oh, Sarah, Sarah nice. says hello, and Stillwater. <laughs> Stillwater. I'm what, what are writing, writing it. Uh, no, um, this book yeah. is great, uh, and I one we of the love things this. that I really love about this book for anybody who hasn't read it, read it, the very simple idea is guy ends up in a town where nobody dies. Turns out things kind of spiral from there. One of the things that I really appreciated is you've shown this willingness to barrel through the core premise and not let it sit. There's information, there's action, there's things that are happening every issue past, uh, and that's made it particularly exciting to read. The the funny thing about that is it's because it's been gestating so long. <laughs> um, because uh, I, I came up with the idea and I brought it to Skybound, and I wrote the first script in 2017. Um, but because Skybound, they're really great about making sure they have a lot of issues in the can before they solicit. Um, mm. uh, so I was writing like, I think I'd written like three issues before we even talked about artists. And at some point I was like, I can't write anymore until I know what the visuals are. Um, because it took so long when I would sit down to write a new issue, I'm just like, oh, I gotta hurry it up. I gotta hurry it up yeah. just because it's like, Oh, it's been, it's been a year. Like I, I need things to progress. So what, what started off as like a kind of a 20 issue kind of outline turned into like a 10 issue outline and then i tacked on <laughs> 10 more issues of like more action beyond that so uh, yeah things really ramp up in it and you know we talked about ramon before uh ramon just yeah kill, killing it on the art I on that it. he's so good yeah yeah so good yeah. Uh, and I did want to ask you, just because I believe this news came out today you're doing a justice league series as well uh what could you tell us about that is that news? <laughs> Do we just break some news to you? It's it's rare That's you'll wild. break news to the the great the artist behind it. Yeah, hey, congratulations. Yeah, yeah it's great. thank you. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Um, yeah, yeah. Something has been in the works for a long time. Um, DC approached me to do a Justice League story and like a digital first initiative, and uh, and they were just like, choose your characters, choose your era, like just just have fun with it. Wow. And uh, so I, I, I really kind of focus on like, I have, I have two kind of favorite, favorite eras and, and types of Justice League. I love the um, Justice League International kind of jokey yeah. stuff, Giffen and DeMatisse and McGuire. Yeah. Great. Um, but I'm terrified to touch that stuff. <laughs> like it's too good in my mind. Like, um, so I, I, I pitch basically Justice League animated, like th those kind of versions of the characters. And, oh, awesome. Um, All right just went all in and like throwing every character in that I can crazy situations and villains and um, uh, Miguel on art is awesome. He's like, like a rising superstar brought over uh, Enrica um, who colors some sex criminal stuff for us for the colors. Mm. And those are gorgeous. It's uh, yeah, it's super satisfying because they're also, they're 10 page chunks, which um, uh, really, you know, talking about Stillwater, like it really condenses the action because I, I still want to have cliffhangers every 10 pages. Uh, yeah. Um, so it, it feels fast paced and um, juggling a lot of characters. So it's been, yeah, it's been super satisfying. I'm super excited for people to actually check it out when it comes out. Yeah, I can't wait to check yeah. that out. Uh, yeah. Another couple of quick questions and then we'll let you guys go. Uh, Green no Shadow says, Chip, can you somehow con or blackmail Marco so that he never leaves the book? Meaning Daredevil. <laughs> possible it's a, it's a it's a danger I, I i know at one point there was like an editor sniffing around to put him on ostensibly a bigger book and uh i was just like no like don't <laughs> don't we just, like we're building this stuff like having him as part of that book is just like it's super yeah. important mm -hmm. um you know it, it's hard work and uh i try to keep it interesting for him He's a big Spider-Man guy, so it's partly why Spider-Man shows up as often as he does in the book. <laughs> he and just draws him in, and you're like, okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. Oh, like, we're, we're, we're leading to like really kind of big stuff towards the end of the year, and uh, and he's looking forward to drawing it, and I'm looking forward to him drawing it. So so he's, he's, in, he's in for the long haul, unless Marvel's like, you know what? This guy draws good X-Men. 
Uh, little update, that is, how, Sarah. that is how Mr. Big Marvel sounds, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sarah is now here watching the show, so no need to drop her name. Uh, so Sarah is high as retracted, <laughs> I assume. Uh, Mark oh, Tweedale right. says, Chip, really looking forward to your Black Hammer Visions issue. Jason, your variant mm-hmm. cover for it looks great. Uh, the awesome. first issue Thank of Black you. Hammer Visions, I believe, comes out tomorrow from Dark Horse by Pat and Oswald. This is other folks jumping into the Black Hammer universe. Uh, what can you tease about that issue, if anything? Um, geez, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't want to give too much away. Um, there's punching, there's punching, there's definitely <laughs> punching. Um, Spoiler. Johnny, well, Johnny Christmas drew it, and uh, so it's gorgeous. Um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of my opportunity because Slam is kind of a Captain America style character. It's my opportunity to tell the, um, the, the, the kind of his version of the, um, uh, the classic Karen Dwyer, Mike Grunewald, Captain America storyline of John Walker coming on the scene. So we mm. introduce our kind of version of John Walker, U.S. agent style, uh, That's awesome. and, and, and how Slam deals with it. Uh, so that that was a lot of fun. Like I said, Johnny is is amazing, and and and, and Jeff and Dark Horse were just so gracious and accommodating, and um, they didn't say no to anything, which is wonderful. Like I think I think because Jeff <laughs> is like a really open creator. Uh, um, he just, he just wants people to have fun with the the stuff he's made. So, yeah. And yeah. And Jason did an awesome variant for it, which is, which yeah. is super cool to Jason, see. What, awesome. what can you say about that? What went into that? Muscle guys. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, what went into that cover other than muscle guys? Um, <laughs> I mean, I got, I, I think it was just, just inspired from like this, me being a wrestling fan and, and just wanted to, to see these guys duke it out. Like this John Walker character, like putting a headlock on, on Slam. Is that his name? Cool. Ape, Ape Slam? Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like Abraham. <laughs> we Abraham. Have Abraham, have Abraham comics. Abraham Slamkowski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's very exciting. That's awesome. Uh, we got one last one over here from YouTube. Michael Vinoy says, Chip, how much do you love ruining Ryan Stegman's day by reminding him he hasn't won an Eisner and you have several? <laughs> um, there are so many other ways to ruin his day. <laughs> he, <laughs> they just revealed, um, he did a, uh, um, uh, a variant cover of Electra as Daredevil. I don't know if you guys saw it. He, he posted it. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. he, he sent it to me. Um, he wrote, you know, just doing this for your stupid book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I wrote back, I'm like, you know, it looks great. You know, um, here's my design suggestion to Marvel for it, in which the Daredevil logo covers it, and also giant text by Eisner winner Chip Zdarsky, so you can't see his drawing. <laughs> which I was, very, I was very proud of. I was very proud of. <laughs> uh, and just one nice comment I want to read here from Bilal in the comments over on Crowdcast. Jason, I just want to say I enjoy your art. It is on par with Chris Samney. Awesome work. Wow. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I he's, agree. he's nice. great. Very nice. Yeah. It really is great, man. This book it looks, talking about Afterlift, like it looks great. It's a great story. Like, yeah, really get awesome. out there and read it. Great. I should, I should yeah. also mention uh, the colorist, Paris, hmm. uh, really, really like elevates the book as well. Um, like his his palette throughout just really makes everything pop and makes the exciting moments even more exciting. Yeah, and Jason and Paris together is like a perfect combo. Yeah, yeah. He had he captures like the right mood and atmosphere of each scene, so it really does feel like you're watching a film. Yeah, it's awesome, uh, guys. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for chatting. Congratulations on yeah, the book, really and hopefully it. we'll have you back for Afterlife too. <laughs> collateral collateral damage that's what we're calling. collateral too that's yes. pretty good we'll have yeah. tom cruise on with you guys and we'll talk about collateral too i won't mention that you said he's an asshole oh, oh. i won't oh. Come on. okay good. come on please <laughs> oh, you gotta give us this he's the foggy of hollywood oh uh, come on don't say that. he says he says that about himself oh that's an insult p interesting interesting all right <laughs> we won't keep you guys here this is gonna go on for another half an hour thanks so much right. have a lovely night all right guys. Talk to you guys good night guys all right. later all right once again oh, that was man. jason lou and chip sadarsky from afterlift which is so out good. from comiXology and dark horse now you can get the full collection on stands as long as 
Stads exist, I guess, wherever you are. Wow. Uh, but Alex, I suck. know. I always take well, a talk. I'm sorry. Jeez. Unnecessary. Uh, but, folks, we're going to move on with our next section, which is my favorite section, because you all make it up. It's your audience all questions. Right. And for your audience questions, there's two ways to ask questions. You all have already figured this out. But if you're over on YouTube, drop it in the comments. We'll read them there. If you're over on Crowdcast, just drop it and ask questions. But first... Let's talk about what we're drinking this evening, starting off with Pete, who seems to be having some sort of an ecto cooler. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, just uh, doing a little uh, Grey Goose do, you know. So, uh, you know, just uh, it's been a rough, rough week already. So I'm just trying to, uh, you know, it's get too- it started. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's I not getting the- rougher. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Grey Goose Do commercial during the Super Bowl. Really oh, good okay. stuff. I love it. They're really putting that out there as a com- a combination for the real people in America. I mean, I I immediately tweeted out with their new tagline. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what have we done? Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, all Grey right, Deuce. let's get into some que- questions oh, here. Deuce. Wait, you didn't say what you're drinking. Oh, Alex, we didn't say what we're drinking. Yeah, so, Jesus. Uh, you yeah, think I'm it's having... just about making fun of Pete? And you're right. <laughs> but also, we say our stuff, too. Yeah. Uh, I'm having some Mountain Dew Code Red and Grey Goose. Smart. No. Smart. So I made myself a Negroni. I'm having a Negroni. Whoa. What a man. Uh, I've got some uh, Five Burrows uh, Pilsner over here, and I'm just about to crack open a classic Modelo because, you know, Ooh. it's the last beer in my fridge. that's always a fun beer to have uh we got a question here on youtube from nelson martinez uh i finally really enjoyed palm springs after hearing you guys discuss it in the past what are some other not so well-known good movies you guys have seen of recent Ooh, Ooh, tough question wonder woman 1984 you know what? It's funny you say that. My yeah. older daughter was like, she wants to watch Wonder Woman 1984 ever since we watched it on Christmas Day. And I was like, I have to watch this for um, a podcast I'm doing. So do you, you don't have to watch this. I'll watch this. So you don't have to watch this. And she's just got very into it. But then they took it off HBO Max. So we, we put on the original Wonder Woman. And man, that movie is much better than, <laughs> yes, than 1984. It it's crazy how much better it is. Yeah. Uh, one that I will mention, actually, this isn't necessarily like a... Uh, I don't know, indie movie or anything, but I watched Finding Ohana on Netflix with the kids Mm -hmm. uh, for a Friday movie night. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's by Christina Strain, who's written a bunch of comic books and I think worked on a bunch of the Marvel shows as well. Uh, It's basically Goonies, but set in Hawaii with uh, Hawaiian Pacific Islander actors. Super fun. I had a fun time watching it, but more, even more so, my kids loved it. And it was all they could talk about for days afterwards, which I was really surprised about. So definitely recommend that one if you haven't checked it out yet. Um, I'm going to throw out Promising Young Woman, uh, which oh, I watched yeah. a couple weeks back. Great movie that's uh, that's a little buzzy. It has sort of just come out, but um, definitely one to watch. And uh, and it's, yeah, it, uh, to quote um, a person named Lee Wana Nana Nana in the comments, OMG, that fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, well, I, so just read the, I just read the I just read the comments. I just read the yeah. comments. Pete, Pete what from about the you? People. Under the radar movies, uh, Tommy uh, Boy, or something like that. Ah, uh, well, it sucks when you do the bit before I can do it. Sorry. <laughs> but what were you going to say, Pete? You were going to say what Alex said? Uh, no, I was going to say uh, Tango and Cash. Uh, it's a great <laughs> movie. Definitely check indie, it out. Uh, indie film. Indie film. Uh, I, I I think it's what this is a good time to go back and like just to kind of like I just find watch, myself watch Tommy Boy again. Through. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, actually, uh, I have a question because we talked about this on our Week in Geek podcast that we do for Patreon members. Uh, Justin and I have both seen this. You texted us about it the other night, so I don't know if you watched it, but there's a movie on Hulu called In and of Itself yeah. that I don't want to say too much yes. about other than it's. I thought it was really impressive. Pete, did you watch it, and what did you think? Yeah, I did watch it. Uh, me and Liwana watched it. It was... Uh, it's. Great. I mean, it makes me miss New York theater big time because mm-hmm. uh, there's always like very interesting, unique, weird shows going on all the time. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really very smart, very well done. Seeing David Blaine get choked up like that was fucking that what got me. Yeah, that <laughs> dude first... never cries. That dude well, never cries. The he fact that, that he's trick, at right? somebody he else's didn't show cry for two weeks. Yeah. It was amazing. I, I mean, think there was a wow magic. 
That guy's yeah. magic. <laughs> well, well, yeah, that's they the They have thing. the notebook it's... out of repeat. Nothing. <laughs> you have to get past the magic because at first, when it started with the magic, I was like, oh, fuck you with this. I don't. You don't like magic? Oh, some magic's fun, but I don't want to go to Hold a. Hold on. You, you're saying like some magic's fun, but David Blade got you choked up. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? No. What's going on with you? I'm yeah, saying is... that uh, it's more than magic. It's not. Yeah. It's not just magic. No. Don't get like because I could have as soon as he did the thing in the bottle, I almost walked away because I was like, "Bah, oh, fucking bite me!" I don't <laughs> want to see out. this. It was walked yeah. out of your house. I was like, "Oh, let me get uh, the whole audience is going to oh, be in shit. a bottle." Oh, you know. But like, it's so much more than that. So I was very uh, impressed yeah. with how deep and uh, how well uh, things kind of unfold there. I guess the lesson there is like a lot of things. The first thing you see in any piece of content is do over and over again for the rest of it. Right. <laughs> but you said you knew somebody who had an experience with it, right? Yes. Um, a friend of the show. I think I already said this last week, Alden Ford. Oh, um, he and his wife went to see it and she, um, I'm checking myself if I did say this already, they went to see it and she was one of the people that got brought on stage for the, this is what not was a her spoiler? A letter portion of it. Mm -hmm. Now, did she, was she in featured then in the in the movie or no? No. Okay. Because she wasn't good. Like she was bad at it. Yeah, she was bad. At it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know if they. I'm sure they were taping over a certain yeah. section of the uh, run. Yeah. Right. Also, it was in L.A. and it was filmed in New York, I think. So that might have had something to do with it as well. Uh, over yeah. on YouTube, just to finish up this discussion about movies, Mark Tweedale says Wolf Walkers on Apple TV Plus. Yes, is a that's great very film. good. Yeah, I've been meaning to check that out. That's supposed to be great. Uh, and Storm Norman 15 says, what are your thoughts on Tenet? I've seen Tenet. Have you guys seen oh, Tenet Oh, yes. I, I'm so glad. I have a Tenet. That's, uh, that's my answer to that question of movies that I really love that movie. That was great. Under the radar movies. Yeah, under the radar. <laughs> I guys, I, Denzel I, I, Washington had a kid. What? Live Tenet. on film, and they released it, and it's called Tenet. Yeah. It's pretty gross. Uh no, yeah, that movie is surprisingly fun. Like I thought, given all the Christopher Dolan hype about it, I was like, oh, here we go. You're gonna be lecturing at me for a couple of hours. But nope, it's a fun action movie. Good times. Wait, you uh, liked it too? I did. I liked Tenet. I was oh, very surprised. Wow. A lot of people do not. I had a fun time. Yeah, I had a fun time. Yeah, very weird. Uh, all right, here we go. Uh, this is from Jay Sinison over on Crowdcast. I'm having a baby girl this summer. Did you all get any uh, cool newborn comics, fantasy, sci-fi stuff? Um, I great question. Congrats, first off. Yes. Um, I uh, We got some good. We got a good Wonder Woman onesie for um which made its way through both of my daughters oh. um which is uh, very cool <clears throat> trying to think oh we've got some uh a lot of maleficent stuff has been going running around my house uh, i got lately. your daughter's uh malt liquor did they enjoy that yet or what's up yeah oh they finished it quickly oh, okay great, uh, it was great. a great it was like a nice little vacation you duct taped it to their hands right yeah, yeah. Uh, he got us the uh <laughs> <laughs> the Edward Forty Hands Junior set, yeah, um, from whatever fucked up baby Love story you, show. Bro. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. I, I know that we got like a little Ewok onesie for my daughter. Mm. I think uh, which is very cute. Uh, and uh, I believe Todd McFarlane sent my son a Walking Dead onesie. What? But. What? You just been holding on to that so you could just nut flex on us? What was that? Talk about a flex. Holy yeah. shit. Wait. Nut flex. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> I really need to have those more accessible. Oh, my no, God. No, I like when you say wait, and then we yeah. freeze for a second, and then you play it. Yeah, the ultimate nut flex is the time you take to do the nut flex. Let's be honest. <laughs> that's what they do on <laughs> radio morning shows right yeah exactly Somebody's like makes a joke the guy's Space like oh, hold out. on a second hold on <laughs> i gotta find it. i gotta find that awooga sound oh there's no God. one more patient than the zoo morning crew audience <laughs> waiting for the, the drops to hit oh man uh all right let's go to some other questions here uh this one wait seriously 
Yeah, seriously. No, it was. I was talking. Are to you his friends with Todd? What's up, bro? No, this was uh, back when my son was born. I was talking to his rep about something for my job at the time, and mentioned like, "Hey, I'm going to be out because I'm having a kid." And she was like, "Oh my god, let's have Todd send you some stuff." So wow. I got a bunch of like buildable Walking Dead action figures to keep me busy, and then he got a Walking Dead onesie. Yeah, Pete, you don't have the Zalbin family action figure set. It's super fun. <laughs> I, I put them in all sorts of weird poses. Yeah. You should. You should. Uh, honestly, they all look like Spawn. Uh, all right. <laughs> there are a bunch of old Spawn figures repainted. <laughs> uh, here we go. Uh, when the writer, I, I don't know who this is from. Oh, Bill is reading, uh, says, when the writer is also an artist, does it make it harder or easier for the artist? Maybe this is a question for our guests. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I would say 100%, yes. 100%. Um, <laughs> I, and if, I think we can answer. I think I think it makes it a little easier based on just the interview we did, because Chip was able to pull some references um, and really speak the language of the artist um, in a way that I think may perhaps at least the communication's a little more, excuse me, clean. Yeah, but he also said he fucked over the artist by being like, "Hey, I need you to do this whole thing in this little space." But I, I think he was being uh, funny in that moment because I think what he does know the limitations of the panels paneling and especially like uh, not being able to do double page spreads when he's asking for something very specific. I think it has to help because no artist is who's writing a book is going to be like, ha ha, fuck that <laughs> artist. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, this is, uh, we have one over here on YouTube. I'm going to ask you guys, do we want to talk about one division spoilers on here? Sure. Me? I'm I'm pretty comfortable. All right. If anybody just want to hear a WandaVision spoiler, turn away for the next uh, two to three minutes or so. But this is also from Nelson Martinez. After the last episode of WandaVision, hypothetically, what other X-Men character would you like to join the next episode of WandaVision MCU? Oh, wow. And this is a great time to plug that we do a WandaVision well, podcast called Marvel Vision that is available in its own podcast feeds. comes out every Friday. We're talking about WandaVision. Every Africa. Friday? Every Friday, we're going to go ah. right into Falcon and the Winter Soldier as well. So very excited about that. Yes, because it's not just a, vi a WandaVision podcast. It's a full MCU mm -hmm. uh, podcast. I think we should uh, take, you know, like a couple Fridays off a month or something. You know what I mean? Come on. Nope. No. Nope. Fuck. Well, um, what do you guys think? I think? I think we aren't going to see more X-Men. I think it'd be, I'd be very surprised if they were just like WandaVision. Let's introduce all the X-Men in this sort of um, uh, more esoteric um, TV series that we're doing. And I think this is going to be, this is like a fun little wink, wink um, f at, for us, for us fans out there. Um, and I love that they're able to do stuff like that, but I don't think we're going to get the full. A lot of people speculating that Magneto's going to show up. I mm -hmm. sort of doubt that. I, I mean, they took the best kind of part of X-Men. You know what I mean? Like Quicksilver was one of the only reasons to watch those movies. So like, you know, you're going to have well, the there's, pizza there's dog. The, I mean, the story, there's storytelling in um, the Apocalypse movie. I think everyone's really gotten behind. <laughs> Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if the question is hypothetically who we would want to show up is, yes, uh, like somebody says in the comments here, Agitator says maybe her dad, Magneto, that would definitely be a big retcon. But like, sure, I'd love to see Ian McKellen there. That would be awesome. Or Michael Fassbender. That would be a lot of fun. But would but you like to point... see that the X-Men introduced or would I'd like to see another like sort of winky if we see Ian McKellen in here? Sure. Oh, but, like, I don't want the x -Men with you. I don't want to see anything else. In fact, I don't even think they are introducing the X-Men. I don't even think that's Pietro at the end there. I think something else entirely is going on. But Whoa. if there was you know somebody something? else hypothetically have you seen a script or something yeah i read through a bunch of scripts we talked about this on our podcast are you not there are you sending a double what are you doing i don't listen to things you say <laughs> even when you're responding to him <laughs> yes exactly great amazing uh, this yeah. is from josh on crowdcast given valentine's is upcoming what's a comics crossover couple that you think would be interesting Ooh crossover couple so like I, I did want to say couple. for the WandaVision thing I did want to say that like while things are weird this could be a fun cameo for Deadpool you know that mm -hmm. would be just like a fun moment if they're going to just do some like quick cameo stuff just have a walk yes. by in the background or something yeah it'd be like a boom mic operator or something like that 
What are, what are you doing? What is this thing? I was waving that um, that anyone who is avoiding uh, WandaVision spoilers can come back now. Oh, oh okay. that's so nice. Hey, uh, care about the people. W? Just you know, there we go. Uh, crossover comic book couple. I'd love to see Batman and Black Cat for just for him to be like, wait, don't I know you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of into cats. <laughs> I like cats. You know human, like humans cats? who dress as cats. Human who, yeah. Humans who dress as cats. Okay. <laughs> and one tiger. Clear. One tiger I hooked up with. <laughs> what about you guys? Comic book crossover couples for Valentine's Day. Mm. Crossover couples. <laughs> uh, Daredevil and Wanda Woman. Wonder Woman. Wanda Woman. Wanda Woman. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. That's the woman who was bitten by a radioactive Wanda and gained the strength, exactly. speed, and agility of a Wanda, right? Of a, just a regular Wanda. Yeah. Yeah. Not Wanda Maximoff. I no, think uh, just a regular Wanda. <laughs> Starfire and uh, Johnny Storm would be fun. A lot of fire there. <laughs> Doubling that's up. What they, that's what they have in common. See, I think they would go with an ice. Don't you want to just sort of opposites attract kind of a thing? Oh, interesting. A little fire and ice. Yeah. Uh, here we got a question from Joe. How do you all feel about the idea that had been running around a while back that Jack Black would have been more enjoyable Star Lord than who we got? Ooh, shots wow. fired! Shots fired! Um, I'll I'll tell you what. I think everybody was fine with Chris Pratt as Star Lord until probably Infinity War. Oh, interesting. I was gonna say my answer or is until like, like I, real Jurassic World. I don't know, whatever you want to talk about in that timeline. I think much more. I I think everyone was very happy with Chris Pratt until um, we learned details about his real life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what I'm saying. Whatever that was, I think it was like yeah. currently with his character fucking stuff up in Infinity War was his real life character of Chris Pratt <laughs> fucking yeah. things up in real um, life. <laughs> his his career to uh, us. Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean that's that's for me for sure. I agree. I think Jack Black would have been uh, so much better and more enjoyable. I don't know. He doesn't seem like a Star Lord to me. What are you talking about? That guy is all star power. I want to see a pudgy guy winning shit. Come on. That's not what I'm saying. He just, Star Lord, the way he carries himself is like such a wannabe. Jack Black is very much more comfortable in his own skin. Uh -huh. And I think Chris Pratt, the way Chris Pratt plays him as like, I'm, I'm good at this. Jack Black would be like, I am good at this, and it's awesome. And sort of like, that's not quite what it, it would be. A different character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that said, even though we've kind of all turned against Chris Pratt, I do think the fact that the Guardians are showing up in the next Thor movie, which is going to be directed by Taika Waititi, that's probably going to be great. Like, I think yeah. he'll do a great job with it. It'll be fun. Uh, and let me say, like, I like his performance as Star Lord. I think he is great at the role, and I like, even though he, it was such a bummer what he did in the Avengers movies. Like, he still, that was his job to do that. He, that's the character. He fucks up in that way. Like, it made total sense. And it's one of those frustrating moments as a fan to see the char character fucking up. But it, it was part. It's not like he did that on set, and they were like, "Don't, oh no, <laughs> that's the story now." <laughs> what? Oh, now we need to refilm the back half of the movie. Yeah, uh, that was the plan. The question from YouTube. Scott Carpenter says, what was your favorite comic from last week and why was it Beast Wars? I believe that's directed towards Pete. Uh, what's up? Let me tell you. I like you Beast coming Wars. for me. I, no, no, if no, you I'm listen not. to our Snack I'm... podcast, I'm here for Beast Wars. Beast Wars was one of my favorite cartoons of all time. Um, and I, 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 I'm in, in the boat uh, for, uh, for the Beast Wars You're comic. You're in the Beast Boat? I'm in the Beast Boat. Nice. Yeah, Beast Wars missed me. I, you know, I don't understand how Transformers are also then animals. You know what I mean? It's, it's, well, they're machines. You what? know what I mean? Do you know, like, what do you know that they're... Like? Hey, Pete, do you know that they're cars and stuff? Yeah, they're but that makes robots. sense. Robots can turn into a car. They can turn into a, you know, a ship or whatever. You know what I mean? Have you ever seen Would a you like peacock? Better... <laughs> Would you like it better if it was like they're beasts and they turned into just these horrible flesh piles or something like that? Just yes, like dude. Now we're talking. Really, yeah, yeah. Real just Cronenberg piles stuff. of ooze. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, glad, glad we covered you. it. Glad we covered it. Dinobots. They they didn't turn into real dinosaurs. They were still metal dinosaurs. So that's why Dinobots. Pete, you are know what? Right. You need to expand your imagination a little bit. And I, I'm not just saying about this specific just across the board. 
Is wow. there, you know what you should try, Pete? Have you ever tried um, uh, like smoking marijuana or weed or anything? Because I oh, think that I, would I, help you okay, really so just weed, like I, open I, your third eye. Just like give it okay. a try. Okay. Where <laughs> do you think in the Beast Wars pitch room, what was the feeling there when the fi- somebody out loud said Optimus Primal? <laughs> I think I think I there was lunch? I think there there was not Beast Wars until someone said that in a room with reg <laughs> full of regular Transformers people, and they were like, "Would you just say?" And they're like, "Ah, nothing." Optimus Primal, and they were like, "Beast Wars," and then they all <laughs> then they went to lunch fully formed. It popped from their head like Athena herself. Kevin says, "What are some of your favorite animal heroes other than Howard the Duck in comics?" Also, who wants a hint? All right, so Kevin has the secret quiz that's been running in the background. We've been very bad about figuring out yeah, to the point impossible. that I think Kevin just needs to tell us what's going on. Kevin's yeah. mad. And yeah. I'll how about, how about as Kevin. a hint, you just tell us what the quiz is? No, don't tell. Don't just tell okay. us. Right. Uh, so it's five words. No, it's four words. Oh. <laughs> I love you, Kevin. <laughs> that's nice. Whoa. I mean, you how do you guys shock her? Oh, I don't. Interesting. Oh, no, you're interesting. Interesting. Four. It's do why do you way. interesting way of doing that? Stop shocking Kevin. Uh, stop, stop doing that. Just stop doing that in general. Yeah. Don't, don't, it's seeing, your hands, seeing your hands that close to the camera what? is weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't like my, that. my oh, milky pops. Exactly. Oh those hands, those hands <laughs> haven't done really, a day's like work in their life. Hands. I'll tell you what, I know they're my own Have hands. Have you ever lifted anything the camera, up They look like those? baby hands. I'm not they quite sure what's look, going on. They, they yeah. do look like baby hands. They look hands. like they've never done a day of work in their lives. You need never. to pick up a hammer, my friend. You yeah, do something. Like. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> 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 those, hands, those hands are reaching for a baba. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, your hands could be like baby model hands. <laughs> Let me be honest, they're beautiful about? hands. I think we've oh. been talking about this for most of the show. Oh, the- <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite animal heroes other than Howard the Duck in comics? Oh, yes. I, f- I always like Throg. For, uh, Thor- I, oh, knew, yeah. I knew you were going to say I'm a big that. fan. I like yeah. Throg. Um, I mean, it, the the Thor animals are good, because uh, yeah. there's a... There's, a cat mm. Thor. There, Beta Ray Bill's like everyone's like he's a horse, but he's not really a horse. So right he's now. not. Of course. Do you know what's weird about Beta Ray Bill is everybody's like he's a horse, but when he's regular, he has a regular face. When he turns into Thor, his snout gets longer. Carbonites. That's true. Carbonites. Is that what they are? They have a regular. It's probably like, it's probably face. not carbonites. Yeah, <laughs> carbonites. Uh, they have a flat face, no nose, and then when he strikes the hammer, he suddenly gets this horse face. It's very strange. Hmm. Um, Eduardo Lockjaw is a good answer. Um, good, good answer. Yeah. There, there's a story. Um, I forget what it's in, but it's one that really stuck in my head. It's. Uh, I think it's an X Factor. Uh, it's an X Factor from back in the day where they. There's a prank pulled where they. Um, someone convinces someone else. I think multiple man um, convinces everyone that Lockjaw is just like a regular um, Eternal, and they just treat him like a dog because they're mean. And it sets a whole bunch of plot into motion. I, very funny. Um, I was going to say the one I've been liking so far or lately is Valkyrie's horse hmm. um, in the Valkyrie comic. That's good. Pete, do you yeah. have one? Uh, Batman's dog has been uh, absolutely fantastic. Ace, Ace. That's correct. Yeah. There we go. Uh, question here from CT Kook. Any chance of doing some reading companions for future MCU TV shows would be cool to read one of the Vision Scarlet Witch miniseries. Uh, I would say mm. that's an idea we always want to do. We just don't usually have time for. We did it for our Lock and Key podcast, which was super fun. We did it for a Watchmen podcast, also super fun. It's just something that with the amount of time it takes to get on and do episodes of these episodes anyway... Uh, it's hard to also then go back and read the comics at the same time. Is that uh, fair? Cry me a river, Alex. Come on, let's <laughs> let's just make the time. <laughs> All right, sorry. It's my uh, we we could yeah. It's Alex. Well, Alex is the one that doesn't want to do these podcasts. Um, yeah. I would be down to do the Vision series. It's I haven't reread it since the um, the original. Yeah, uh, I would say part of the problem with doing the MCU thing though is these TV shows are going to be nonstop. They're doing, they're finishing up WandaVision. There's a one week break. Then they're coming in for six weeks of 
Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Then I believe they're taking two weeks off. Ostensibly, Black Widow is supposed to come out. We don't know when Loki is coming out, but it's probably going to be a week or two after Black Widow is out. That's going to run for six episodes. They'll probably take a week off. Then they're going to hit 10 episodes of What If, the animated series. Wow. And after that, yeah. they got Miss Marvel. They got Eternals. They got Shang-Chi. They've got Spider-Man 3. They've got Hawkeye queued up. They're going to go into She-Hulk. They're going to go into all of these things. It's never going to stop. 52 and weeks I, of Marvel. I'll tell you what. I love it. And here's the thing. We've been in, we've been under like a tough time. We've been being squeezed content wise for the last year. And then the floodgates are going to open and we're going to be drowning in just tier one content. And I'll tell you what, another thing, this is a little peek behind the curtain, but Justin and I usually are like, I don't know. I don't know if we need to be doing this many podcasts. And Pete is like, no, you wake up. At five of the morning, you watch WandaVision. We taped this exactly. podcast at six of the morning. We got to go. I want to, and yeah. he, he keeps us on. He has us taping podcasts you don't even hear. Exactly. We have a whole podcast for Doom Patrol we've done that we've taped that no. he's deleted. Oh, don't you <laughs> fucking <laughs> put that out there. <laughs> we've, re, we've recapped every episode That's twice. That's so fucked up. Yeah, it's we've so really talked up. through. We had a lot of big revelations there, a lot of fun <laughs> takes. Oh, such a fun series of podcasts. If only Pete would release them. He yeah. has the files. He just won't release them. The yeah. logo you made, Pete, for Doom Patrol is wonderful. It's a Doom Patrol? That's, Doom what, you That's, That's what you called it. That's what you called it. Yeah. Doom Patrol. <sighs> uh, you know, it's, it's like the production. Patrol, but- it's the it's the production. Uh, and Pete <laughs> made us do a Paw Patrol podcast, and we still haven't released that. Uh, Every episode. Here, here's a question that's really calling us out here. Hollywood Homer says, "Also, can you all get 1080 cameras for streaming?" <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, probably we should. You we don't want to see this any more clear than it is. Trust me. All right, <laughs> it's scary. No, um, uh, I don't know. I, mean, I think the, the biggest really wants to see these baby heads. No, get those oh, baby heads. Stop out of it. Stop it's weird it. because Alex, your those face look is like 14 year old hands. It's it's. It's weird because your 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 face isn't in in high def, but when you put your hands up there, I can see every pore, <laughs> every <laughs> untouched pore. And so Pete, crazy. you do a good job of avo- avoiding the high def by never appearing fully on camera. You're always hiding around the edge like a creepy Wilson of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question here from hey, Eduardo. Neighbor. Inspired by Darcy's visit to the show, what are your opinions on Howard the Duck? Excited for the upcoming show if it happens. Want uh, any solo titles? What do you think? What What are your opinions on Howard the Duck? Eh, I'm I'm all right with him. I'm never. I've. Uh, I need a little bit more. He's he, he's a little like. I want more from him. Yeah, I mean, what does that mean? when I was little, like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's just a duck. What's the? I want more out of the duck. There's we more, get a lot of there's ducks. more to him. Now, I guess what I feel like the the. The thing with Howard the Duck is he always ends up being uh, directionless, a little bit rudderless, I feel like. And so, um, and, it, it, and it's an easy punchline. I feel like people treat, like at the end when we saw him at the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, it was like a little punchline. And I would like to ta- be taken seriously if we're going to take him and, and do that. Yeah, yeah, Howard the Duck has never really spoke to me. I mean, a, f- a funny character. And Chip is Rude. very funny. Rude, and then. I'll say. Uh, so he does a good job with that voice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I agree with Justin a little bit. If there was something that really okay. kind of made us, uh, get kind of, uh, behind the scenes in this head a little bit, understand the duck more, maybe I'd get into it. But when I was younger, I thought the hollow duck was the coolest thing. And then when I rewatched the movie, I was like, what the fuck is this? So, um, yeah, I haven't really liked the duck after that. So, mm. Thank you for referring to him by his full last name, The Duck. duck. Edward Doherty (laughs) says, hypothetically, if AT&T were to sell DC to Disney and the characters were introduced into Marvel Comics, disregarding any business or logistical issues, how would you like this handled purely as a story? Wow, that's a wild question. I love to frame that as a corporate acquisition makes it like too real. Too, it makes it too possible <laughs> uh, that it's like a little stressful, honestly. Because if they were like, so Spider Man's in New York, um, and uh, Superman's in Metropolis, but they start, you know, they're pretty close together, so they occasionally swing into each other and see each other. Like that's just, it's yeah. that's more stress. That's stressful somehow. That yeah, that kind of blows my mind because it's like, no, those are separate. I, you can't, you can't do that. But that would be a 
amazing. Given that the question was specifically framed about don't worry about the logistical issues, let's just yeah. do JLA Avengers. You know, just go for it. Wow. That's how it's brought together. It becomes more <laughs> Well, wouldn't they have to fight first and then become friends? Well, there's they like the four I'm fight. talking about. There's the four issue series, JLA Avengers, which is awesome. A couple of people have uh, called this out. Luana Nana says, suddenly Gotham City and New York City both exist. There's this great bit on there where they're in the JLA Watchtower. And the uh, the Avengers are looking down at Earth and they're like, oh, wow, everything kind of looks the same, but your East Coast is way bigger. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Which is great. And so that sort of thing. I'd love to see it just like blow it out, make it huge, throw everybody in there. Why not? Let's go for it. Make what? it wild. That would Why not? Too much. Make it wild. Alex Selby. Baby hands says make Baby it wild. Baby hands is in the crazy shit. <laughs> I would want to see um, the Earth on the other side of the sun style thing. But they're in the same universe. They visit a little bit, but mm -hmm. not a whole thing. I, want yeah, my... I guess to be to be more specific, I think what they did in JLA Avengers is they brought them together for this epic event. It was all of the heroes, all of the villains fighting huge storytelling. But ultimately, they were like, oh, we're different parts of the multiverse. You're Earth 616. We're Earth whatever. So that's where they head off at the end. They go into their own separate storytelling, but they get to come together for events. I think that would be fun. Yeah. Pete, you look angry. I just, it's, I, I don't know how nah. they would exist because it's like, why century, you look similar to me. You know, like, I don't know how they, just seeing them standing next to each other would be like, what the fuck? This is all weird versions of each other in ways that I, I don't want to see collide or think about. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, question from Straight Bullet. I haven't ditched cable yet. Is it time? Wow. Yeah, Pete, be careful well, how you answer here. Yeah, I know. This is, guys, be, everybody be cool. It's Straight Bullet. No, so first off, like, what are you getting from Straight it? Bullet asks, uh, somebody is really running out the bandwidth of my HBO Max subscription. Should I cancel it? No, no, and don't look in my history. Um, I think I think it's one of those things where are you getting like live sports? Is that what you're counting on? Because that's the only reason I can think of to keep it. Um, because a lot of the other things you have to pay individually for different sports and stuff like that, and that can get expensive. So if it's cheaper to get your sports and get cable, I would say keep it. Otherwise, if you don't give a fuck about that, what are you doing? I don't have cable, but I have like a ton of streaming services and sling and it is a little bit of and a Roku. So I'm always just like, OK, how do I get to this thing I need to see? And it's a lot of like just uh, jujitsu to get the right app and be like, oh, there's OK, I can watch this football game, but there's a three second delay. Uh, OK, I'll just see if I can find it on Twitch. And I'm like adding Twitch, illegal Twitch streams into the mix. It's just like. It makes your TV watching much more of a uh, a setup. You have to really do a lot of work to get to what you want to be doing. But uh, once you're there, it's much cheaper. I mean, I'll tell you, if I didn't have to do it for my job, like I have, we cover live events. Oh, here you know, we, we cover, go. No, no, no. This is not a flex, Pete. This now, is, listen, cover... I'm a fucking big deal, and I do a lot of things. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's fine. I'm a fucking big deal, and I do a lot of things. So <laughs> I do a lot of things. <laughs> For my job, we have to cover live events like the Golden Globes, the Oscars, whatever. Yeah. So it's tough to do those without cable. The other thing, honestly, is like the CW, just because you can't really stream that anywhere. Yeah, CW's like is a ghost. <laughs> is and sometimes I like to watch those shows live or we have you know we watch Riverdale live with the fans whoever is live tweeting from Riverdale after I really don't know we gotta find that out at some point yeah we, your we minions you're talking about giving a shout out why to do your you minions? do this beat <laughs> what I don't have an army of people who hang on every word as I give them little morsels every week Listen, just because I got you the do. word Tony trending today on Twitter it's no big deal. Uh, Holy that was flex. That's a fucking flex right there. That's Wait, a hold flex. On one you did so not. No, no, no <laughs> time. If you can't do it right away, you can't do it. Get your finger on the pulse. Not flex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need to put a better. We need to put a better trigger. We're creating on that. a monster. We're gonna have to, Justin. We're gonna have to apologize for Zalbin at some point. It's gonna get too <laughs> to much. 
to uh, the world. Know, Alex, I mean, this guy is just, he's got minions that are holding him up and he's getting bigger and bigger and it's just, oh, it's going to come crashing yeah, down. It's really out of control. Alex, send me the sound ups. I'll handle the button. I'm just going to keep my finger <laughs> right here at all times. Oh, shit. Oh, baby hands. <laughs> Oh, stop I can't it. Quite reach it. Not my like hands these man short. hands you got right here. <laughs> hands, I think we just accept that hands are bad close up. Last question we got here from Delsa Martinez. If you guys were to choose any one comic book character to choose to fight for you in a triple threat, fight to the death, who would you choose to fight for you? Ooh, Wait, against what? the others. Against We're choosing a, uh, a hero to fight against the other Is... ones that you guys are choosing. Right. To do battle, winner takes so, all. So it's like uh, Marvel is this Capcom type of situation, and we're we're choosing our tag team. Yeah, so you have to choose um, one of the Mega Man characters. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> <I'll>... <laughs> no, man, go you go with you know like Chung Lee or something. You know, something easy that you can just kind of just smash buttons. I mean, if we're going with like fighting, you games, don't have to play. You have to play. I, I always no, they... played the Sentinel in the X Men fighting game, so I'll just choose that. No, that's you these would. are bad. These. These You're so answers. fucking these evil, are, dude. These are not the answers that were asked for. It was like choosing a comic book character to fight Berserker against Barrage. the other. You go with fucking Wolverine, man. You can't kill him. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, Peace Punisher Slipper just has a good follow up here. Who do we want in a three way? What? I'm not going to read the second part of that question. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, you you did. You literally I'm did the second very part. Very happy. Of the question, you didn't which get into sex criminals <laughs> with an Alex Chips and Arsenal. Sure, yeah. Uh, I'm going to stick with Sentinel for that one as well. Oh. <laughs> oh, cool. Nice. Good fight. Cool. So Wolverine, Sentinel, and I'll choose Galactus because you're all dead. Because <laughs> you're uh, all dead. Wow. Perfect. All right. JT wins. It is yeah, time for our good. next section, which is trivia. And for oh, that, we're going to turn it over to Pete LePage. Pete right. LePage. Right when the Ooh. gray deuce hits, Pete's yeah, ready I'm to Yeah, I'm too drunk for this. Um, the squirrel barrels sound beautiful. Nice job, Kev. All right, so this is the part we give back to you, the lovely audience. It's an opportunity to win 25 free dollars in the form of a gift card uh, to Midtown Comics, of course, online, because uh, we don't want you to go out in the world and get yourself in trouble. Um, so who would like 25 free dollars? Simple raising of the hand, put a hand up, a hand emoji, say first hand up, you know, any yeah, of those. If you're things over on YouTube, there's a little bit of a delay, but same thing in the comments, you could drop a hand or say me or anything like that. And really, Eddie. oh, here we go. We got Kevin's uh, uh, hand Kevin's up. first hand Kevin, up. Kevin, bring it. Good. Maybe Kevin's going to drop a little hint for our, yeah, uh, our quiz. So. The, the quiz. We got quiz on quiz on quiz happening right now. It's going to yes. be weird. And Kevin to the in the background, street. because it has been a little while, we each individually had quizzes. It started off with Pete's Secret Punisher's quiz, which everybody knew about for a very long time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kevin, up. looking very suspicious when he goes in. Yeah. The oh, shot. Kevin, do well, you I have a 1080? Well, I wasn't expecting the fish eye. Yeah. Hmm? Do you have a 1080 camera? Dude, this guy's got a good very camera. Clear. Yeah. I'm not sure what the quality is. Yeah, you have a, t- a camera team shooting you, right? The local yeah, team. I, but I am not sure why it's fish eyeing on me. You look great. Oh, Kevin's gone. Yeah. Wow, Kevin, real faithful to the uh, the production value of his trivia. Yeah. No, okay, fine. Kevin, we got we got to ask this first. So you've had this secret quiz you've had going for a while. Yeah. What can you tell us? What clues can you give us? Well, see, most of the hints I gave were about the structure of it. You know, four words, one of them quiz, all that. The last three hints I had given. We're more about the inspiration okay. yes. for it. So, for example, the last qu- clue I had given was that it was about, well, I had asked you about characters who were created for comic book TV shows. So they weren't yeah. like from, you know, just like had existed in comics and were reinterpreted, but had originally been from the show. The week before that, I had asked you about... Um, aspects of your life that would in some way shape or form ooh, ooh, these are hints. influence your writing. Now, if those twin hints don't, you know, twin inspire hints. you. Oh, is it the Wonder Twins? Wonder I was twin also wearing twins. purple and gold the week before, but now you've oh. got to figure out the, but now you got to figure out the, the, the phrase and where the words. What, what are the ones activate quiz? Four words. And remember, Wonder quiz is the only four-letter word. Quiz. No. Oh. 
and quiz is not the last word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You may have to do some substituting. Oh my goodness. Yes, that's difficult. clearly true. That's clearly All right, we're going to think about this. Honest. We're really going to okay. get on this. In the meantime, Kevin, why don't we have you play some trivia with Pete LePage? Pete, All right. Justin, okay, would wait. you work on this fucking secret quiz while we do this? Yeah, please? I'm on it. Hold on. I okay. took a lot of notes here. A lot of notes here. So oh, wait, good. wait, wait. We got an answer. Straight Bullet says Wonder Quiz Power Activate. Well, it's missing an S, but I'll take it. Wonder Quiz Powers Whoa. Activate was wow. the wow. Yeah, Stray Bullet. Oh, uh, good job, Stray Bullet. Wow. So wait, do you have a quiz? Or was it just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have a quiz. Oh my God. We're okay, this is quiz. perfect. You're on Pete's quiz and you're doing your quiz at the same time. This is perfect. <laughs> okay. And for those of you listening to the show for the first time, just Sorry. throw away your throw away your iPhone and right in the trash. <laughs> just, just throw away your life. All right, take it well, away. Well, I Kevin. took a, you know, I took a lot of notes here for no fucking reason. <laughs> Justin, you would have got it. You would have well, got it. Well, it's interesting you say that, Justin, because that was the clue to activate my quiz that I've been running. <laughs> oh, my God. I took a lot of fucking notes. Unlocks Alex's reporter quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Kevin, do you have some questions or what's going on? Yeah, I do. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. We're just Are we all questions. taking the quiz now? I, yeah. I okay. don't know. I, I didn't so know when, if you were going to do that or if you are going to bring Stray Bullet in or what. When, when Kevin starts talking, Ooh. Pete, you also start your quiz. Okay, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Oh, man. Wait. All right, so let, let's fortunately, I had the first and, couple uh, of questions memorized because I don't have my quiz Bullock in front of me. How about play in the comments, okay? Okay. All right, okay. So first question, it, you know, I'm going to start out with an easy one. Okay. Yeah. As seen on a gravestone in the opening credits... What is the full name of Bill Bixby's character in The Incredible Hulk? Um, I know you, it's this one. Comic I... book TV. This is going to be hard, but it's David Bruce Banner. That is correct. All right. Oh, wow. Straight bullshit. Okay. Yeah, that too. All right. So start out easy. Now we're going to get tough. That oh, one was hard. First off, just okay. so you know, Kevin, that so... one was actually quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all heard. I mean, we've all heard at some point. Uh, Linda Carter referred to as TV's original Wonder Woman, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. By my count, she was fourth. In fact, she was the fourth in four years. Because when she came along in 1975, we'd had prior Wonder Women in 1974, three, and two. Now, I'm going to give you two options for this one. And there is a hint if <laughs> you need it. Not that it'll help a whole lot. Sorry, real quick. Okay. Pass? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. My bad, my bad, okay. my bad. So name any two of the three women who played Wonder Woman before Linda Carter. Uh, one in live three? action, two in animation. Okay. Two in animation. Or name the actor who played her in live action and both of the animated television series in which she had previously appeared. Now, this isn't an actual guess. I'm just checking. Does time traveling Gail Godot count? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Uh, in the comments, I Wonder Woman seems to know the live action name. Yeah. I say, I say, answer it. And we'll yeah. find a way to divide up. Well, quiz. you can do it either way. I mean, yeah. Anyone who's got any idea, fucking help. <laughs> help us. <laughs> no, don't give us hits. See, everyone doing a quiz. Stop giving us quizzes. I, for those listening to the podcast, people in the comments are giving us quizzes based on these quizzes. You know They're giving us quizzes. This is done. Okay. Um, so here's your hint, and it actually goes back to something we actually discussed on the show a couple of weeks ago. Now, I've written this question like months back, but it, and then we had something a couple uh, Robin weeks ago. Robin Williams? Yeah. Ben no. Borkali says Robin Williams. So uh, remember uh, when we talked news? about filmation? Mm -hmm. yeah. And Filmation had got their start doing uh, the DC characters. You know, mm -hmm. they did the Superman, Aquaman cartoon. They even did three animated shorts with the Teen Titans that included Donna Troy Wonder Girl. They never used Wonder Woman until mm -hmm. 1972. And then by a year later, Hanna-Barbera had the rights to her. Mm -hmm. But you've already probably worked out that animated series. <laughs> no, I haven't. 
<laughs> I love how much credit Kevin's given us. I, yeah. you know, I appreciate that. I the other week we barely knew who Jack Kirby was. Don't give us his credit. <laughs> um, great. You know what? Well, I remember, think we should... I mean, you know, we can always come back next week. Sure. Yes, I think you know for the we'll next. We'll come week. back next week. In the meantime. Let's turn it over to Pete for his equally hard quiz. All right, Kev. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay. All right. Today's trivia is on topical comic news and a small nod to the legend Ian Holm. Okay? So, (laughs) question number one. Heroes Reborn will feature throwback blank. Is it A, hologram covers, B, trading card covers, or is it C, Bruce Willis? So it's either A, hologram covers, or it's B, trading card covers. I'm going to go with B. Correct. Mm, nice. I'm Great. very excited for this. this oh, wait, we did, in, in Kevin's quiz, he never got to the, um, the uh, where we select the answer. None of the multiple choice. Yeah, we didn't get to that part in Kevin's quiz. Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, question number two. Chip Zdarsky's Justice League is he is going to break up the Justice League because of blank. What will break up the Justice League and Chip Zdarsky's run? Is it A, a murder trial, B, mind control, or is it C, Mila Djokovic? Djokovic, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh so no, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite movies. A, I mean, it's a movie I like a lot, but it's don't pick B. I'm going to go with uh, A. Right. A murder trial. Whoa. Justice League. All right. So last one. Here we go. X-Men and X-Factor will return in May with which edition? Is it mm-hmm. A, Sabretooth, B, Dazzler, or is it C, Chris Tucker? Ooh, I was <laughs> going to pick that. But what I wrote was Brian James. Brian <laughs> James. So it's either A, Sabretooth, or it's Zalbin's favorite, Dazzler. Love her. I'm going to go with Dazzler. You are correct, Great sir. Yeah. 25 free dollars is yours. And Actually, yeah. instead of Chris Tucker, I should have gone with uh, you know, Tom Tiny Lister. Who also Ooh, what's the movie, Kevin? What's the movie? Oh, Fifth Element. Fifth Element, there we go. Great movie. Kevin, you have won $25 to Midtown Comics. Shoot us an email at comicbookclublive at gmail.com, and we will get you set up with that. And, of course, oh, he's gone. Oh, Hi, Kev. Thanks, Kev. We will figure out what's going on with this quiz next time. That was like watching Pat Sajak and Alex Trebek try to out-quiz each other. (laughs) (laughs) I'll tell you what, Pat Sajak loses. (laughs) As we all know, the, tomorrow is new comic book day, except for DC Comics, which have been out today. But what are you guys looking forward to? Justin, uh, you got anything ready? Great question. Justin, is a great week for you. Mm. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Low. I'm oh, talking are about you talking birthright. about Low and Birthright? Two That's exactly what I'm talking comics. about. Okay, so why don't you let your pat, your boy JT Sizz? I tried to set you up, but you didn't fucking know what I was talking about. The beauty of a setup is when you stop talking after you say it. Uh I'm going to give it up for Low, the final issue of Low. What a cap on a great, great series. Rick Remender does such a great job. He didn't know that this series was going to end in a time in the time we're living in, but this issue feels so timely in a crazy, crazy way. Um, it is, if you're not reading this series, um, start at the very beginning and read it right through. I'm going to do a big reread after um, I read the last issue um, tomorrow um, because it is so good. I I agree with you. Like uh, it ends so well, it makes me want to go back and start from the beginning and enjoy. Well, it Well, you over assume again. we haven't read it yet because it that's what I'm tomorrow. saying, asshole. Don't fucking make it weird. You know what I'm saying? Like I just, it's, you know, I'm just saying uh, mm-hmm. in general, not specifically. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Last Witch number two, and man, yes, Daredevil. Wow. I wish I could talk to the writer because I've got questions about religion. 
Uh, I'm looking forward. We talked about this earlier on the show, but Black Hammer Visions number one is coming out. This issue is written by Patton Oswalt, art by Dean Kotz. And all of the supplementary Black Hammer stuff that has been coming out from Dark Horse is so good. All the miniseries, everything they've been doing, just high quality across the board. It's been really impressive. The creative, I feel like the fact that it's a home for outside creators to come in, it like lets lets people just cut loose, um, Mm -hmm. both writers and artists. And it's amazing. A universe that is like, just ready for more stories. So definitely pick that up. Good stuff. And that's it for our show, everybody. A couple of things before we go. First of all, thank you to our amazing guests, Chip Zdarsky and Jason Liu. Check out Afterlift from Comixology and Dark Horse Comics today. Next week, we're going to have a big pack show. We're going to have David Peepos is going to be here talking about Aftershark wow. Scott's honor. Yes. Also, Natalie Zena Walchaltz, the author of Hench, a really fun novel, is going to yes. be on. And just added Derek Robertson is going to be here. Ooh! Yeah, our love that. talk about his new Kickstarter Space Bastards. Maybe we'll sneak in some stuff about the boys as well. We'll see. Yeah. A couple of other things to plug. Riverdale After Dark, our Riverdale podcast is running every Wednesday right after that show. Not Umbrella Podcast Academy. Our Umbrella Academy podcast is finally going to wrap up this week, we think. We hope so. <laughs> We'd like to hope it does. Yeah, you fuckers better watch it. Marvel Vision, our Marvel podcast continues to talk about WandaVision on Fridays. American Godcast, our American Gods podcast, happens most Sundays, not this past Sunday, but upcoming Sunday. Patreon.com slash comic book club to support the show, iTunes, Android, Spotify, Stitcher, or the app of your choice to subscribe and listen at Comic Book Live on Twitter, comicbookclublive.com for this podcast and many more. Until next time, see you with your baby hands. Uh, Watch those baby hands. Pete, release the release Doom Patrol. Hashtag release the Doom Patrol, Pete. Hashtag free Doom Patrol. Free Doom Patrol. Free it. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. See you next time. Good night.